Organize Me Radio, episode 28, Photo Storage and Organization. I'm Naima Ford Goldson. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Organize Me Radio. I'm Naima Ford Goldson, and today's guest is Darla DeMauro. She is a certified photo manager as well as a certified professional organizer. Her business is Heartwork Organizing in Pennsylvania, and today she's going to tell us all about Save Your Photos Month, which is the month of September. Please welcome Darla DeMauro. Thanks so much for having me on, Naima. I am so excited to be here today, and we're going to have a little bit of show and tell, too, so it'll be fun. Yes, I am so excited because, as you know, I haven't had anyone on to talk about photo organizing yet, so this is really exciting and very fitting that it is the month of September, so I'm really excited to find out more about it, but first, I would like to um, know a little bit more about you, so can you tell our listeners, um, you know, how long you've been in business and just a little bit more about you. Yes, yeah, so Heartwork Organizing was started 17 years ago. It's been a wonderful 17 year journey. I have a professional organizing firm that has employees and we do four main things in my firm. We do professional organizing for home and business, uh, a lot of productivity training and I work with corporations as well. And um, decorating, home staging, and photo organizing. I also have four published books on organizing and um, it's, it's a great life. I got into this after 12 years as a project manager in the tech world. I, like a lot of people, I think. Um, at one point I called myself a corporate refugee. Oh. <laughs> I spent enough time in the world of cubicles and um, managers to know what that was about and to get some really great training. And when I had a chance to leave that environment, it was, um, it was kind of serendipitous. There was an opportunity for me to leave and I grabbed it <laughs> and thought, yeah, there's, there's going to be a second act there. And um, I left not knowing what I was going to do. I said to my husband, I came out of really a pressure cooker situation. So I said to my husband, I'm going to take three months to decompress and then I'll figure it out. Well, three months later, I had a business going already. Um, I just, I was doing what I love to do, which was sort of, I don't want to say putter around the house, but play with the things around my house. And uh, that's how the organizing and decorating came to be. And then Several years later, I realized that photo organizing was actually a natural extension of the data and project management work that I had been doing in the corporate world. So we added that uh, line of business on to my business. And thank God we did, because that's mostly what we've been doing throughout the pandemic. There's been a lot of people who've backed their trucks and cars up to uh, my office with bins, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know what's in here. We haven't looked at it in decades. Can you make sense of it? And uh, so we've been able to safely take that stuff into my um, home office, which is, as you see, it's a, it's a bona fide office. It's not like a converted bedroom or anything. I actually bought this house for the office and thank again, thank God, you know, all the things that you do earlier in your business um, present opportunities later. So that's what we've been doing for the last 18 months um, is really focusing on the photo side of the business. And I, I just, I'm happy when I get to do that, but we're also happy when we get to go out and organize people's, you know, closets and kitchens and garages and that sort of thing too. So we're not all over the place, but we do have this nice, uh, tidy little line of business that very naturally goes from one thing to another. So what made you decide, um, did you have an aha moment about the photo storage? What made you decide to really um, pursue that as the main portion of your business? I did. Well, it's, um, it's actually not the main portion. We do about 50-50, you know, in-person organizing and about 50% of our business is in-house and uh, managing people's digital collections and their physical photos as well. But yeah, the, you know, if you think back, when did you get your first iPhone? The iPhone came out in 2007. And the only reason I really remember that is because my daughter and the iPhone were born in the same year. <laughs> so, so you've had your iPhone for 
not probably most of us, because we most of us didn't get an iPhone the first year it came out, but only for as many as 14 years. So it hasn't been in the scheme of history, it hasn't been that long, right? Um, but 14 years ago, I was organizing. And we would come across organizing jobs where people would pull this shoebox out of the back of the closet and they'd say, okay, you know, my kitchen's organized, my closet's organized, but what about this shoebox? And back in the day, I would say, well, it's, you know, kind of in a box and it's dry and you've got it in your house, not in your garage. So that's good. It looks pretty good. Why don't you put it back on the shelf? We didn't have all the tools 14 years ago or even 10 years ago that we have today. And so, um, about eight years ago is when I joined forces with a new organization. Uh, then it was called APO. It's currently called the Photo Managers, and it's an international trade group, uh, an education association, very similar to the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals, NAPO, that you and I both belong to. So I knew that joining forces with other smart people who love doing what I do is the best way to educate myself. And um, so that's what we did about eight years ago. And at that point, when clients would get to the back of their closet and bring that shoebox out and say, oh, what do I do with this? I had a lot more tools. I, I was able to say to them, well, tell me you know, what you want to do. What are your goals? Uh, just like we do with organizing closets. We you and I never go in and say, okay, I'm going to organize a closet the way I want to. We right. do what the client needs, exactly. right? So I always start with, um, you know, what are you thinking about? What do you, you know, are there, are there pictures in here you haven't seen in a long time that you want to somehow get onto your phone? They don't have to know the nuts and bolts of how I'm going to do it, right? I just need to know where they want to head. So, right, right. So then for um, people who are just starting out the process with, um, you know, realizing that they have these bins and bins of photos. Um, how do they start the process? Let's say they are trying to do it on their own and they don't have someone as great as you to help them, you know, to lead the way. How should they start? Well, it depends on where you're starting from. Again, like most anything. Um, the one thing to keep in mind, and I don't mean to scare anybody off with this, but photo organizing is very technically intense. It just is. Um, now, if you've got basement, a basement full of printed photos and there's thousands, we regularly have clients drop off 10,000 photos to us. That doesn't phase us at all. And we regularly have um, clients that we're working with that have 10 or 50 or even 100,000 photos on their phone and their computers. Wow. And they don't even know what they have or how many they have. We have to count them up and say, okay, this is where we're starting from. But given what I just told you, some people who are technically adept and don't mind getting into you know some new software or just handling you know their computer uh getting into their hard drive that's on their computer um doing some some data management a lot of people who are comfortable doing that are really good diy candidates if they have the time and i don't know about you but I don't know anybody who has extra time no, in their day. Really, no. Okay. <laughs> so the other thing to remember is that if you don't want to DIY it, you don't have to. There are people like me all over the country and in fact all over the world now who will do it for you. And just like many people in this world have decided they don't want to clean their own kitchen sink on a weekly basis and they don't want to run their own vacuum um, or, you know, do anything else really. We live in a society where you can find experts to do things with better results and cheaper than you could do it on your own. Having said all of that, you can absolutely do a lot of what we're going to talk about today on your own. And it starts with literally uh, getting the stuff out of the basement, getting it out of the closet, out of the attic, calling your mom and saying, hey, do you have any old photos? Uh, getting all of that in one place. So we call that the gather stage. Okay, so gather your photos together. If you have a dining room table or a project table that you're not using on a regular basis, just literally get it all in one room. And then you'll know how, your, how big your project is. We then do, uh, so we have kind of five steps that we go through. We gather, or I'll rattle them off for you. And if you're watching this, listening to this, you can write these down. So gather, organize, um, back up, share and maintain. So once you've gathered everything together, then you can decide, okay, how much organizing do I need to do? Uh, is it already, did my mom already organize everything and uh, it's already in date order? 
and I'm good to go. I just need to go on to the next step. Or do you have a lot of organizing to do? Um, again, we love projects where people just kind of drop it off. It's like, I don't know what's in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it's fun for us. It's uh, I tell people it's like a, um, it's, it's like an escape room and a murder mystery show and a really big 10,000 piece puzzle all at once. Mm -hmm. We are doing a lot of uh, data analysis and just kind of putting the puzzle pieces together to say, what story are we telling? Because even though I started out by telling you there's a lot of data management involved in photo organizing, really it all boils down to what is the story that you're trying to tell? And if you, it's kind of like that old saying, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Um, it's good to have uh, an end result in mind. You know, what am I trying to do? Am I trying to pass these down to my kids? Do I have a really big family and I want to make sure that everybody has all the photos that I have? Do I have a really small family and I just want my single daughter to have all the videos that she made when she was, you know, taking dance lessons 30 years ago? Um, everybody's got a different end point to their photo project, just like everybody has a different kitchen, everybody has a different layout in their closet, uh, different wardrobe. You're not going to organize the same way everybody else is organizing, and that's okay. I think that is such great information. And it's funny because um, I feel like years ago, um, you know, I grew up in, I was born in the 80s, grew up in the 90s. So I'm used to physical pictures. And, you know, most times I still like having a physical picture. Yeah. Um, I do photo albums for my kids, you know, to get the digital pictures, you know, out of, you know, space or whatever, wherever it is, right? So, um, but a lot of us, you know, do keep, like you mentioned earlier, our pictures in our phones. We have, you said some people have thousands of pictures in their phones. Um, and a lot of times I'll notice, you know, that I might upload something to Facebook and then kind of forget about it until it pops up on a memory. And it's like, oh yeah, you know, it might be something I put in the yearly books that I create, but it might not be. Um, how do we form better habits so our photos don't get lost in the digital cloud or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it's interesting. Um, the relationship that we have to our printed and our digital pictures does have to do with how, what our age is right now, whether we grew up with everything digital, we grew up with everything printed, or whether we were uh, growing up as the technology was growing up. Um, most people, again, going back to around 2005 to 2010, that decade is where we all transitioned. Maybe we had a digital camera before we had our iPhones. Right. Um, or, yeah, exactly. We, we had digital cameras for uh, almost a decade before the iPhone came out. Um, the iPhone really, and, and when the iPhone came out, the iCloud was not a thing. It didn't, it wasn't it didn't exist, right? It took a few years for that to the iCloud and then other cloud services to become widely available. Um, so your relationship growing up in the 80s is, with photos is different from somebody like a grandmother whose most, almost all of her photos would be, you know, from the 50s, 60s are going to be paper photos um, versus my kids who um, very rarely are ever going to have a printed photo in their hands. But it all goes back to the story that you're trying to tell. So if you're a person who every now and then uploads something on social media, Facebook, like you said, and that's um, how you enjoy, that goes back to one of the steps that I mentioned earlier, sharing your photos. Um, if you enjoy sharing your photos and they end up on social media, that's great, but that is not backing up your photos. Okay, for a bunch of technical reasons that we do not have time to get into today. Um, but I want to point to what I have in the back here. And actually, I'm going to grab one of the photo albums that I put. This is mine, um, but we put these together for clients regularly. Um, these are custom photo books. And the reason I wanted to show this is because uh, I love Paris. Do you like Paris? I love Paris. Okay. <laughs> I've only been once, but I loved it. I go every time I get a chance, which isn't nearly enough, but I haven't been able to go in the last 18 months. And this little gal right here, she just turned, um, had a birthday, but she has been traveling with me to Paris since she was five years old. Oh, so okay. she can, her accent is better than yours and mine put together. <laughs> um, but wherever you like to travel, whether it's to the Outer Banks or, you know, 
wherever it is, offshore, onshore, it doesn't matter. We haven't been traveling the last 18 months um, during the pandemic. And it has warmed my heart to be able to look over at different times. And this little gal will come and pick up these albums and she will be flipping through them on a random day. And uh, that's really what I'm trying to get to with my clients, myself, my own family is tell the stories that you don't want to lose. And yes, we've gone from printed photos to digital photos. We are actually encouraging our clients in some cases to go back to print because this is what you hold in your hand. You know, there was a, a stat not too long ago. It's kind of changing now because more kids have um, uh, access to printed stuff. Mm -hmm. But there was a, a stat for a while that kids under 10 years old at the time, again, those kids are now 14, 15, had ne most of them had never seen printed pictures of themselves. They'd only ever seen themselves on an iPhone screen. Wow. I know. Isn't that crazy? So when you, um, you know, when you're, again, I'm, I'm trying to give you a lot of information here in a very short period of time. This is a very deep topic and it's something that you can tell I'm really passionate about. I want people to, you know, reach out to me if they're like, oh, I have a question and you didn't answer it on the, I, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm a real person. Anyway, find your story, right? Your story may be the story of your parents. It may be the story of your kids. It may be that your story as a child, which your children don't have that much information about. It may be a single trip that is a story. It may be like you just mentioned a minute ago, Naima, you and I both make annual books. And those are the stories that, uh, you know, I've made for since I've had kids. So I have a little over a dozen of those. And every year I make a book and it actually does not go from January 1st to the end of December. I make that book and it covers um, Thanksgiving of last year okay. to Thanksgiving of this year to just before Thanksgiving. And I do that because then I can tell that story of a full year that doesn't exactly line up with the calendar because then I order six copies of those and I send them to all the grandparents, all the aunts and uncles, and that becomes their uh, Christmas present. And I don't know about you, but I mean, we're, we're, both, we're both trying to get our, our clients to stop buying things that they don't need. And when do we get most of the things that we don't need? At the holidays. Mm -hmm. But a photo book that I share with my, you know, the people who love us, that is never going back to the store. They're never going to throw it away. It's never the wrong size. It is the ultimate photo gift. And it's one of many photo gifts, right? So that's what we're really trying to do with Save Your Photos Month, which is something that the photo managers, my, uh, the organization that I belong to, um, does every year. And in September, we try and give, uh, it's really our, like our community service to our community, which is the world. We're trying to give as much information as our followers and friends can, can, uh, can manage really on what to do with your photos. If you don't know where to start, that's cool. You know, follow me. I've got tips on Instagram every single day and they're very focused on what you can do in little bites, five minutes at a time, an hour at a time. Um, because we know photo managing a lifetime of photos can feel really overwhelming. But you don't have to go to alone. You don't have to start from scratch. We've already got plans laid out for you. If you run into a problem or a question that you have, there's probably an answer that we've already done a training session on, and it's already out there for you to, to enjoy and to learn. That's great. Now, I know there are so many people who might be, and I'd say um, maybe more so older people who um, are kind of like, in that area where, of course, they grew up with the physical photos and now they too might be on Facebook, like my grandparents, I have a 94 year old grandfather who's on Facebook and he's actually really good at it. However, That's my, awesome. other yep. my other grandparents aren't though, like they're terrible with social media. They have no idea how to do anything. Um, and I don't think they know how to, you know, create a photo album, you know, like the ones that we create their photo albums were taking the pictures and putting them in those little pockets so they yeah. can look through their photo book. For someone who is not tech savvy, how can they be helped? Someone who um, 
let's say may perhaps they're doing it on their own. How do you explain that to them? Well, you know what, for, for my mom, for your mom and your grandma, uh, grandfather, you know, these people don't have to change what they're doing, right? They've been printing pictures for 50, 60, 70 years. If they want to keep doing that, that's totally fine. What's, what's a tragedy is if they're still taking pictures and they're never printing anything out and they're never backing anything up. Because as you and I both know, we have both seen it. Uh, it's not a matter of if your phone or your computer is going to crash. It's a matter of when. Right. So, uh, you know, the younger generation can come alongside of them and say, hey, let's just make sure you're um, backed up on the iCloud or, and I shouldn't have said it that way because the iCloud is not a backup. Say it with me, name it. The <laughs> iCloud is not a backup. <laughs> the iCloud is not a backup. Not a backup. It's a great system and we do use it. And we do encourage you to use it, but it's actually not a true backup. Um, but what we want to do is make sure that our older generation can enjoy the photos in whatever way they want to enjoy them. And for some of them, that's going to be taking their digital camera over to CVS and printing out a roll of film or, you know, five or 10 or 50 pictures. Um, I, I remember I asked my mom, I think she doesn't do this anymore, but I used to ask her, hey, how do you get, how do you like, what do you do with your pictures? And she said, well, I take my camera into CVS and I plug the little card thingy into the machine thingy and I print out everything that's on that card. And I went, oh. <laughs> you what? <laughs> she didn't know anything other than that to do, but you know what? She was enjoying herself. And the, the cost of printing photos is so, you know, it's so inexpensive. And then if she wants to give them away or put them in an album, you can still do that. You can go into Michael's or you can online, you can find uh, the slide in kinds of albums. We like them to be good quality because some of the older ones are not. Um, and, and they can still do that. But if you are, say, putting together um, an album and you want to do something like what I'm showing here, um, you know, maybe you can do that for them. If they're really tech savvy and you want to teach them how to do it, there are plenty of, of places. You've heard of them all. Um, I'm not recommending anything, but, you know, we've heard of right. Shutterfly and, mm -hmm. and Chatbooks and um, Snapfish. And uh, there's a whole bunch that are actually better quality that you haven't heard of. Um, Mpix is the one that I love. It's a consumer facing print company where you can um, do everything that you would do on Shutterfly, but it's much high, high quality, higher quality book. And it's a made in USA company. So they're based out in Minnesota, I want to say. <laughs> um, and they are the nicest people ever. And you get your books uh, within a week. It's just really great, great quality. So there's, uh, there are um, tools and services out there that, you know, give a look, uh, check it, check them out. Apple, um, used to print books. A lot of people will remember when you could just print right out of your um, Mac. They don't do that anymore, but they were always doing it with a company called Mimeo, M-I-M-E-O. Um, and that option is still there. You just, you have to kind of know how to get to it. Um, so I'm just, you know, I, I don't mean to overwhelm people with a lot of names here, but there's a lot of ways to do um, the new, what we would call digital books, which start out digital and end up in print form. That's what we mean by a digital book. Okay. And then you can get to, let me see if I can find one real quick. Then you can get to these beautiful spreads that look like this, That's right? Gorgeous. So that has a much bigger impact than uh, taking a sort of a, you know, not great quality four by six um, print that you printed off at the drugstore. Again, not high, super high quality. And plugging it into a book where it may, may or may not kind of be the best photo that you can get. So when I was a teenager, I grew up in Nebraska and, you know, we do a lot of telemarketing there. And my first telemarketing job, I was 16 years old, um, was selling and, you know, I'd call people and I sold AOL, you've got pictures. And it was basically um, trying to get people to, um, upload their pictures, I believe, onto disk. I think they would send it in to us or something along those lines. And then it would be- <laughs> Everything had a disk attached to it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, it would be put on a disk and then sent yeah. out to them. Yeah. Um, so I just, it's, it's funny. So we were talking about backing up your photos and saying, you know, the iCloud is not the best. What do you use to back up their photos? 
So we use the, and you'll hear this in the Save Your Photos Month material too, we recommend, and the industry standard is, uh, across all types of data, not just photo, it's the three, two, one backup method. So there's different versions of this, but basically it all boils down to three copies of your data. And when I say data, I mean photos. Um, three copies of all your photos on at least two different types of media. Ideally, one of those is gonna be located in the cloud. And it doesn't have to mean the Apple iCloud, it could mean many different clouds. Um, but I do wanna show something to you that uh, a lot of people haven't seen. I should have gotten the color version, but this is a, an external hard drive. It's about the size of a wallet or a little smaller than a phone. A lot of people know what these look like, right? These are USB, um, USB drives. This and this is essentially the same thing, not quite the same thing, but these are both good tools if you can get them in the right size. They are both good tools to create a backup of your material. So you have the original in wherever it is. It's either going to be on your phone. There's more to that, but we don't have time or your computer. Um, and then this is your second copy. And then the ones that are on the cloud, again, lots of different options there. Uh, you've got the iCloud, the Google, which I don't recommend that anyone uses. Call me later if you really want to fight about it. Okay. <laughs> um, Dropbox, you know, Shutterfly. Again, please do not use Shutterfly as a backup. There's a whole bunch of reasons why it's not a good backup. Um, but there's a bunch of places, right? It's not just one place somewhere out there on the network. Facebook also is a great place to share, not a backup. Say it with me. Facebook is not a backup. Not a backup. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So we really do want to be backing this up. I mean, you know, we could all tell our own stories, but in January of this year, I was sitting at my desk and I had a PC on my desk that was my primary computer and it went pop. Oh no. And that's all she wrote. Uh -oh. And uh, luckily I had multiple computers in my business, so it didn't, you know, affect me at all. And I knew that all my stuff was backed up, but that's really where my personal photos were. So um, I did have to actually do, you know, a little dance and get my photos where I needed them to be. Um, but it happens to me, it happens to everybody. So we don't want to have one copy of those photos out there and have them at risk. Also, I mean, the, the reason that Save Your Photos Month is in September is because that lines up with here in the U.S. It's um, Be Ready or uh, Disaster Preparedness Month. And that is an effort by the U.S. government to have everybody think about how we're going to be safe in uh cases of disaster and gosh there there's too much disaster to go around these days wildfires random flooding in tennessee like i've never i don't understand what that's about mm -hmm. um hurricanes all up and down the coast i live in pennsylvania we're mostly shielded from a lot of that but we have had a couple of big hurricanes come through in the last year philadelphia was just flooded um, in the last month, like everybody else was, these things happen. And even if you don't have the big disasters, you're still liable or, um, you know, it's still a possibility that uh, you're knock on wood, find something to knock on, but you know, right. fire and flood um, are still possibilities in your house. I had a personal flood um, 14 years ago, actually, two inches of water in my basement because some piping in my basement broke. It was installed wow. incorrectly and it broke overnight and I had two inches. Two inches is not a lot of water, except it ruined everything on the floor. Mm -hmm. So had uh, at, my photos were not at risk, I'd never store photos in the basement, in the garage or in the attic, if you can get them. If they're in there right now, you need to get them out. Like that would be my one big uh, to do from this, from this um, podcast that we're doing today. Um, and I would give everybody that homework to go and get your printed photos out of your basement and to look up how to back up. Um, and if you're not sure how to do it, you could go to my website and I have a how to back up your PC and a how to back up your Mac, two very easy articles. And it's not that hard. It should take you less than 10 minutes. You do need one of these. And if you don't know what this is or that's confusing you again, I am always here for you. So. Oh, that's great. You've given us so much information about photo storage and I loved it. I'm going to take some of these tips as well. Um, but I also wanted to get into the books that you've written because you've written several books. Can you tell us a little bit about them? 
Yes, thank you. So uh, the first one was called, the, is, is called, still available, The Pregnant Entrepreneur. And I wrote that as a business book to help women through their special nine months as business owners, because there's no other, still to this day, it was written 11, it was published 11 years ago, and there's uh, still no other resource to help a woman entrepreneur get through her pregnancy with her, with her, um, finances, mm -hmm. her business, and her sanity intact. <laughs> so um, at the time, I just thought it was going to be the first, you know, and only book. Uh, I ha have gone on to write three that are in the Sort and Succeed series. So in total, they're all four organizing books. The, the first one is just a very narrow audience. The other three are in the Sort and Succeed series, and Sort and Succeed is the five steps that I use have used with my clients for years to help them get and stay organized it's yes another acronym would you be surprised that an organizer has organized the way i teach how to get organized um, but the most recent book i'll just flash this up here is called the upbeat organized home office and the funny thing about this is it was published january of 2020 and it's all about how to organize your home office both the stuff well the stuff the data and technology and your productivity uh, systems and your habits and bring all three of those together so that you have a really great uh, work from home situation. Well, that was published in January 2020 and in March of 2020. You remember what happened. Right. Everybody, Everybody went home to work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but what's interesting is the corporations that I'm working for and even private clients that are calling uh, they are, for whatever reason, I'm getting a resurgent of a lot of those people calling me now and saying, I know everybody's been working from home, but they were kind of winging it for a while and we need to make it a legitimate thing. And we need to help people still continue to transition to more of a hybrid work environment. And so um, I'm still training hot and heavy on this topic. And the book is you know, out there and available to help people with their work at home or hybrid work situation. I love it. Okay, so one of my favorite things to ask every organizer that I interview what are your favorite organizing products? I have very few because I'm all about using what you have instead of going out and buying new things. So um, I, I'll answer it a different way. I would encourage you to buy anything that isn't a plastic bin. <laughs> okay. Putting things in bins does not make you organized. <laughs> so I have a lot of, and you see some of this in my in the background of my office. Um, I love magazine holders. Uh, that's the the blue that you see in the be and behind me. They're the sort of file um, boxes that are made to they're sort of cut on an angle and they're made to hold magazines, but they they hold a whole bunch of other things too. Um, you can get them all over the place, but I live near an IKEA, so I often pick them up there at different quality and price points. Um, I buy a lot of storage bins that are made out of sort of high quality cardboard or coated cardboard um, because they have a lower footprint um, than, than plastic. And uh, I do love the Freedom Filer. I think that's been mentioned on your show before. I have been sharing and, and teaching people how to use the Freedom Filer for over 10 years now. It's a really great tool. If you don't know how to set up a file system, um and uh yeah those are probably some of my favorites i love it now what is your greatest achievement you've achieved so much let me tell you so much um, i really admire you what is your greatest achievement as an organizer i think that it is uh, i'm actually going to echo one of your previous guests that you had on um my my biggest two biggest achievements are really um on both sides of the business. One is on my with my employees and building a business literally out of nothing where I now have payroll and I have responsibility to employees. I've created economic opportunity in the community where I live and um, and I take that responsibility very uh, you know very very much to heart. Um, my business is called Heartwork Organizing. We are all about, you know, I'm not about putting things in bins. I tell people all the time and they're kind of surprised, look, I'm, I'm not really about, I'm never about judging and I'm not really about whether or not your house is organized. I'm about how it makes you feel and whether you are confident enough to entertain angels when the opportunity comes up. 
So I'm proud that, uh, that employees are on my payroll and I can continue to, they're usually younger folks and I can continue to help them become more professional and um, you know, move on and become the people that they're meant to be. I love being part of their history. And also I love being part of the history of the clients that we serve because Organizing is, again, how many times can I say it? Not about putting things in bins. It's about having a home that you love and being able to get to the next goal that you have set for yourself. That was so inspiring. I love it. It is just so great. And thank you so much for joining me. I learned so much with you just in these um, 30 plus minutes that we've been on. Can you tell everyone how they can find out more information about you? I would love for people to use all the resources that I have out there for them. Uh, I have over a thousand blog articles and plenty of free downloads uh, that can help them on their way. So they can find all of that at my website, which is heartworkorg.com. And that's spelled just like it sounds, H-E-A-R-T-W-O-R-K-O-R-G.com. And if you put a Darla at in front of that, you've got my email and I am always here for you. Darla, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate having you on. Thanks so much for having me on. You're doing good work with the fabulous guests that you have on and all the wonderful topics that you're covering. So thank you so much for including me. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you everyone for joining us and tune in next time for an all new episode. Thank you so much for joining me today and make sure you follow me on all social media platforms. And remember, get organized, go further. You're listening to Organize Me Radio. I'm Naima Ford-Goldson.